Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x does not exist. Now, we're dealing with the limit of a function. Which function exactly? Well, as you can imagine, we can take any non-zero real number x and perform sine of 1 over x. So, we're going to say that the function we're dealing with is the function f from the non-zero real numbers to the real numbers, defined by f of x equals sine of 1 over x. So really, we're trying to show that the limit of our function as x approaches 0 does not exist. And to prove that, we're going to assume for a contradiction that the limit instead does exist. we'll say that the limit is equal to L. Now, what does this mean? Well, by the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function, it means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for all x in the domain of our function, if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus zero is less than delta, then the absolute value of sine of one over x minus L is less than epsilon. So because we're saying the limit of our function is equal to L, this means we're saying that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number 1 half. So taking epsilon to be 1 half, we have that this is true. So there is some delta greater than 0, such that for all non-zero x, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 0 is less than delta, then the absolute value of sine of 1 over x minus L is less than 1 half. Now we're going to use this fact to help us reach a contradiction. Now, to proceed further with this, we are going to use a property of the real numbers, which is sometimes called the Archimedean property. And it says, for every positive real number y, there exists a positive integer k, such that 1 over k is less than y. Now, this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number pi times delta. So taking y to be pi times delta, we have that there is some positive integer k such that 1 over k is less than pi times delta. And now let's manipulate this inequality. If we divide pi to the other side, we get 1 over pi k is less than delta. Now, the denominator of this fraction is positive. So if we make the denominator bigger, then it's just going to make the fraction smaller. So for instance, if we increase the denominator to 2 pi k, then the fraction will become smaller. And furthermore, if we add pi over 2 inside the denominator, then again, it'll make the fraction smaller. And of course, the entire fraction is positive. And now, let's apply this statement. Right, this statement works for every non-zero real number. So in particular, it must work for the non-zero real number 1 over pi k. So taking x to be 1 over pi k,
we have if this is true for 1 over pi k, then this is true for 1 over pi k. Well, it's pretty clear that this is true for 1 over pi k, right? Since 0 is less than 1 over pi k is less than delta, and 1 over pi k is equal to this, well, yeah, this must be true. Therefore, this is true. So we have that the absolute value of sine of 1 over 1 over pi k minus L is less than 1 half. Now, 1 over 1 over pi k is just equal to pi k. So this must be equal to this. But then, if you recall, the sine of any integer multiple of pi is equal to 0. And then, of course, the absolute value of 0 minus L is just equal to the absolute value of L. So we have that the absolute value of L is less than 1 half. So what we've done here is we've applied this statement by taking x to be 1 over pi k. We can do the same thing, just instead we'll take x to be 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. If you do that, well then, this is going to be true for 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, and therefore, this must be true for 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Now, 1 over 1 over pi over 2 plus 2 pi k is just equal to pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And it turns out, if we take the sign of any integer multiple of 2 pi plus pi over 2, then this is just going to be equal to 1. So what we see here is that the absolute value of 1 minus L is less than 1 half. So we see that absolute value of L is less than 1 half, and absolute value of 1 minus L is less than 1 half. Therefore, absolute value of L plus absolute value of 1 minus L must be less than 1 half plus 1 half. And 1 half plus 1 half is just equal to 1. But also, by the triangle inequality, we know that this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of L plus 1 minus L. But if we perform L plus 1 minus L, the L's go away. So literally, this is just equal to absolute value 1, which is equal to 1. So this tells us that 1 is less than 1. So we've reached a contradiction. Our assumption that the limit does exist led us to a contradiction. So we must instead have that the limit does not exist. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.